Welcome to our council meeting for August 11, 2016. This is a special meeting. I call the meeting to order at 5.05 .05 p.m. We just have two items on our agenda today and we are privileged to have the opportunity to interview three of our citizens in the town of Gilbert. And we're grateful for your efforts in being here and for your commitment to the town. Uh, we sincerely appreciate you putting yourself out here for the good of the community and we know that it takes a tremendous amount of sacrifice so we do thank you and your families for assisting us in this effort this is an administrative item this administrative item is for council discussion and action and so at this time we will conduct the interviews for the vacant town council seat with a term ending january 2017 the format will be as follows. We will have all three of the candidates. The order has been randomly determined just prior to this meeting. And we will have each candidate come down to the podium here and um, they will be given two minutes for opening. There are six different questions. All candidates will receive the same six questions and we will just go in an order of um, my right to left and after all six questions are answered with a three minute time limit. We will have a one minute closing statement. All three candidates will be waiting um, upstairs in our one of our conference rooms and so none of them will hear each other's answers but um, will be welcome to join us back into council chambers um, immediately following all three interviews. After the interviews are concluded, we will recess our special meeting and reconvene an executive session. The council members will all, um, all six of us will go upstairs to room 233 where we will have an executive session. And immediately following the conclusion of that executive session, we will come back down um, and in this room conduct agenda item two, with, which is the discussion, voting, and selection of a council member to fill that vacant seat. So that's the format that we will follow tonight. I think we've um, explained that fairly clearly and uh, we will proceed. Um, it's, there is no roll call, Pledge of Allegiance or anything on this. We're good, okay. Just following the agenda. <laughs> um, so at this time we will excuse two of our three um, to go back up to room 233, Robin will take you up there. Our first interview will be Eric Jones, and the second interview will be Robert Dunn. The third interview will be James Canlin. So, Eric, we'll have you step to the podium, and those little uh, box with there's a little box with some lights on there, and that will uh, guide you in your timing. It's just right on top of the podium. Got it. That's the one. So again, Eric, thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate your, your commitment to Gilbert, and we look forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you for having me, uh, Mayor Daniels and town council members. Um, I really do feel as it's, it's a privilege to be here. Um, it's kind of one of those fast and furious things that just kind of happens in life, and I really consider it an honor to, uh, to even be considered for this role, uh, to serve the town in this way. I love Gilbert. Gilbert is an amazing place. We have something very special here in this town and any opportunity to, to step up and to be involved um, is important, I think. And so I'm here, I'm, I'm coming and I know you read the information about me and in, in the application and all that, but um, I'm just hoping that the wide array of experiences and um, things that I've done in the past, whether it be in business or in um, just helping out around the town in service in the, in the private sector of real estate, um, in technology sectors, whatever it might be, that it would just be able to be used um, possibly in this role here as an interim council member. Um, so uh, thank you for having me. I'm humbled to be here. I'm ready for the questions, I guess. So the, the town has adopted a set of uh, financial policies which are public record and available upon request uh, to the town clerk. Are there any changes or additions to these policies that you would make? If so, which ones and why? Okay, so I got a copy and I, I would like to say that I read every single line 
of it to pick it apart and just to make sure that I, I found some problems with it. But I did do a cursory glance at it as well as any other information I have just from living in Gilbert for over 21 years now and, and being involved in different capacities. And I appreciate the detail in the report, but after reviewing it and looking at things, I guess I decided that my view is this interim role, I mean, we're talking about four months, maybe a little bit longer than that. I don't feel as though this role is one that's supposed to come in and pick apart a fiscal policy that has just been approved and signed by the mayor, I believe it was just at the end of last month that that was done. So to come in and, and do that, I don't know if that's really the primary role of, of an interim uh, council member, but rather to come alongside uh, the existing council um, and just help. And where commitments have been made, commitments need to be kept. Now, I did look at things, and I am in complete agreement, and I love the fact that in our community, that uh, within our state of purposes, fiscally, uh, our balanced budget, we have the, the aspects of financial conservatism, but also with flexibility. We have the understanding that we're going to adhere to the generally accepted accounting and management uh, practices and policies, um, as well as transparency and communication. So um, I'm in full agreement with those things. I embrace them wholeheartedly, and I'm happy that we do have that in our fiscal policies here in, in the town of Gilbert. Um, I'm also, I want to add, I, I'm a zero-based budget kind of guy. I, I like that. I'm a fan of that. I think it helps prevent um, money going places where maybe it won't best be used. It helps us to uh, focus on the things that matter the most first and also prevents having maybe areas of, of the organization, or in this case the government uh, of the town of Gilbert, kind of bulging just because they expect to always get what they've had and maybe a little bit more. So I'm a fan of zero-based budgeting and I'm also... Um, I also view the role of a, of a council member or really anybody uh, in this type of an elected role, not that this is necessarily elected in the same way, but I view it as, as public servants and I've known most of you for long enough to know that you adhere to that also, that you're public servants first and foremost. And because of that, we have really that fiduciary responsibility of stewarding the resources of the community, which are the hard-earned tax dollars of our neighbors here in Gilbert. And so I would take that very, very seriously. Eric, again, thank you for being part of the process here. My thank question you, is on Parks and Rec. Okay. As you've observed the design phase of the regional park in South Gilbert, what are two areas that you feel are strengths in the design and two opportunities the town should be addressing going forward? And then I have a second part on okay. the financial model. I'd love to hear your initial thoughts on that. My initial well. thoughts on the project are I think it's very impressive. And I've had a chance to look at the different iterations as they've been coming out um, of the proposal and the plan. And it's one of those things that ultimately we'll, we'll see how it all happens in, in the end. But it's one of those things that could continue to keep us kind of on the top in this state as being a crown jewel of a family-friendly uh, environment and, and community to live in. Rod and this team over at Parks and Rec have done a great job and so I want to give a shout out to Rod. He was in uh, my Gilbert leadership class with me so I feel obligated to do that and, and uh, very much happy to do that. Um, the other strength though that I see in this project is that it can alleviate several other the capital um, improvement projects. In other words, what I'm seeing happening as I'm, I'm looking at the plans is that there are a lot of projects that were going to be kind of one-offs all around the town, whether it be an aquatic center or some kind of swimming pool or, or uh, walking paths or more playgrounds and, and, and fields and stuff as that. And bringing those, I believe, bringing those into more of a centralized master plan kind of environment adds a lot of extra value. It makes it a lot easier for uh, the, the citizens and the end users to, uh, to be able to interact with, uh, with all of those things. I really am excited about the Aquatic Center. Of course, it's Olympic time, and so we're watching all the swimmers, and we're, you know, dreaming. I don't know what the Aquatic Center is going to look like, but is it a place where maybe a future Olympian could, could train and uh, Gilbertonian, you know, on the platform wearing the gold. I don't know. Um, but I think bringing all of these things together, it just adds value, adds a lot of value. 
uh, takes a lot of things that could be very useful in the community and makes them even stronger. So those are a couple strengths that I see. Um, as it relates, you, you wanted some weaknesses. Every time I look at the, uh, the, the plans for this, I always see that, that one road that's going through the middle of this very long um, and, and seemingly narrow on the drawings uh, park. And I always think, is that going to be congested? Because when something very popular is happening and, and the place is hopping with people, are, are people going to end up getting frustrated that it's kind of hard to get in or out? I'm not talking ingress and egress to the actual park, but the, but the one interior artery that's feeding the whole thing. Another thing, of course, as we look at something like this, it's an expensive project, and so you got the funding, and uh, where's that going to ultimately come from, uh, as well as the operating costs and maintenance costs. So those are things that I would keep into consideration. Eric, our capital improvement plan is essential to the short and long-term planning of our community. How would you prioritize the projects contained within the CIP capital improvement plan? Okay. So the capital improvement plan is 293 pages. Uh, and again, I did not read every single line. Um, but I will say this, it's impressive. And, you know, sometimes you look at things that come out of government and you look at them and go, why does it have to be so many pages and so big, uh, specifically when it's, when it's laws and regulations. Um, but when it's a capital improvement plan that is receiving that kind of detail from, from our town, whether it's council or our town manager, Patrick, and others, um, it's encouraging as a, as a resident of Gilbert to see that kind of attention being put because capital improvement plan is in a lot of ways the heartbeat of where we're going as a community. So um, I believe that, and, and just hang with me here for a moment, I have a purpose for kind of going off on this a little bit, but I believe that governments are established by God to serve man, to punish evil, to encourage good, to uh, safeguard humanity um, in liberty and life, and to enact laws that are deemed necessary to, to benefit the citizens. And so I see the capital improvement plan helping determine, are we going to do the first things first? And so as I look at the priorities in a capital improvement plan, my, where I go first is, is public safety. And I see that that's one of the primary things that's in, that is involved in, in, um, in governing any, any, uh, any municipality. And I love the fact that we live in a town where public safety does receive the kind of attention that it needs. And because of the fact of the safety, because of the leadership of Chief Dorn and others, and the attention that we put, we have a thriving community. A safe community is gonna be a thriving community. And I just would love to see that continue. Uh, another, number two, I look at infrastructure. Uh, for a community to thrive and for people to be successful in life, in business, anything else, you have to have infrastructure. You've gotta have streets and roads for people to be able to do life and do business. You need water, you need waste. Um, all, of that, all of that's extremely important. And, and again, we excel at that in Gilbert and that's why we're thriving as a, as a municipality, as a town. Uh, following that, we have redevelopment, which is important, municipal facilities and parks. And so there it is in a nutshell, 293 pages distilled to less than three minutes. All right. Eric, thank you for coming down tonight and being a part of this process. You, Having observed the council over the last few months or the last few years, what is one thing that you would do differently? And what is one thing that you would keep the same? That was uh, actually, of all the questions, this was one of my hardest ones, just for the first part. And so I'm gonna kind of do a little cop out here on the first, what would I do differently? And, um, and that would be that, I just think it's wrong that there's an empty seat right up there. Everything's kind of unbalanced and I kind of like things to be uniform. And so um, I'd love to see that seat filled and it would be an honor to do that over the next few months. Um, so that would be the, the different um, aspect. But I wanna talk about as I looked at this, at this question and, and pondered it, what I love about our town council, and again, I've been involved with interacting with, with many of you and others in the past, also over the past few years specifically, and what I find about our town council that's so important is, is that our town council is approachable, is you all are involved 
in the community. You don't just come in and sit on, on some comfy chairs up there above everybody else and make rules and decide how people's money is going to be spent and all that kind of stuff, but you're actively involved in serving in real ways alongside um, people here in the town, alongside other Gilbertonians. And so I think that's very unique. Uh, my understanding, I just heard on the news that we're the fourth largest city now in the state. I believe we just outdid Glendale. Is that true? Can you all? Okay, and so here we are uh, growing in size, yet leadership is still extremely engaged at the grassroots and very approachable. And I just love that and, and I'm encouraged that I believe it's gonna stay that way. And so, yeah. Hi, Eric, how are you? Hey, Bridget. What do you think you would be able to accomplish or contribute to the town during your appointment on the town council? Um, I believe I come with a unique perspective, and I, I think we all do, because we all have our own experiences, our own background, uh, strengths, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but with my unique perspective, I come with over 21 years of living in Gilbert. I've raised my kids in Gilbert. I still have my youngest is 12, my oldest is, is pretty much grown up and in college now. And so I've seen a lot. I've seen Gilbert grow from when we moved here around 60,000 people. We lived in the neighborhood behind which, what is now Lowe's just across kind of kitty corner from here. There was no Lowe's there. There was really nothing other than this building southeast of where we live when we first moved here. And now we're what, on nearly 240,000 or a little bit more, the fourth largest city. And so I've raised my family in Gilbert. I've done business in Gilbert. I lead a church in Gilbert, uh, being involved in nonprofit and from that service perspective, um, in many ways of helping the least of these and having my, my hands kind of in, involved in those types of arenas. Um, been active in relationships with many of the leaders in this community. I've had the privilege of of working with some of you, with working of, with others in this community, other leaders in this community, uh, our past mayor, John Lewis, our chief of police. Um, and so those are, those are some of the aspects. Um, I have my own background. I have my own experiences. I have my own convictions um, of godly convictions and conservative values, family values. And I stand on those very strongly. Uh, they, they help guide and direct any kind of decision that I'm going to make in life, um, including if I were chosen to be an interim council member. But also, I believe what I can contribute is this, is that I come with a motivation truly to serve the council. I really do. I, I don't have some kind of agenda uh, you know, in the back of my mind or in my back pocket right now to, to come in in the next four months to, to, to try to dismantle something or push some kind of, of new agenda. Um, I really believe that the interim council member, that that is a big part of their role, is to come in and, and help support what's already been done uh, and make it better because they're there, not to try to shift things and change things. And so the other thing that I hope to accomplish uh, if I'm chosen for this role is the opportunity that this would provide me to meet more people in our community, to listen to more people in Gilbert, to be able to encourage uh, more of my neighbors that, that live here in Gilbert, the Gilbertonians, which I, I love that term, which is, it's, it's fabulous. And so I, I really am driven by, by encouraging others and building other people up. And I see that personally, this role um, as, as a council member would give me a great opportunity for that. Well, first of all, I didn't want these cushy chairs. I like the other ones that we had before. So I'm just, you know, nice. trying to save, you know, the tax Enjoy them, enjoy. <laughs> Eric Ann, thank you for um, your desire to serve our community. It's been part of your life. Again, thank you. Um, here's my question. The town council sets policy for the compensation and benefits for all town employees. What compensation approaches are you most familiar with and what is the best approach for Team Gilbert? Okay. Well, a lot of my background is in sales in my professional career. I, I was involved in sales and business development and also leading sales teams uh, as well as small business. And so a lot of my compensation experience 
that I would gravitate to back in the day, as they say, would be uh, incentive-based, performance-based compensation. And I've found that it, it can be very successful. It, it helps motivate people. And it ultimately, when, when done well, it rewards those who really need to be rewarded and allows them to make even more than, than they would make in another structure. But I also realize this, that, that there's no one size fits all as compensation goes. For instance, at the church that I lead, we don't have an incentive-based, incentive performance-based system. In other words, if I preach a great message, I don't get you know, a raise. If, if one of the other ministers in the church is like praying and, and a lot of their prayers are being answered, they don't get a bonus because of that. So it's not a one-size-fits-all thing in every circumstance, in every environment. And this is what I've seen. I don't know all the details of the compensation for Team Gilbert here, but I do know this. It, it, it is working in the sense that it's, it's obtaining, attracting, and retaining people of high character and, and high capability that's producing amazing results. So it is working. Uh, can anything be improved? Everything can be improved in some way. But what we know is that what is happening right now is working, and we know that by the amazing people that, that serve in the town of Gilbert. Eric, thank you so much for your thoughtful answers. At this time, it'll be your one minute closing. And at the conclusion of that, we'll just have you walk right up that aisle and up to 233, which I think you know how to get to. I know so, how to get there. Thank I you. do. Well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate this opportunity. It is kind of a whirlwind. It all happened very quickly. And next thing you know, here we are standing and talking. But I just want to say, after 21 years of Gilbert, I'm all in. And so that's where I'm at. I'm all in with Gilbert. I love this place. Like I said earlier, it's a special place uh, that we get to live in and serve in and uh, raise families in. And I greatly respect those of you, yourselves definitely included, that have gone before, that have helped make Gilbert the special place that it is. And I know that that takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of hours and it takes a lot of work. And um, so I, I've, I've come here by God's grace and also humbly recognizing that, that it would do the same for me, take that kind of hard work and commitment and attention um, in order to continue something that, that a lot of people have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into. And so I do come very humbly and it would be a privilege. And I just want to end with this. Um, there are three, three things that really drive me in life uh, and those are this, that it's better to give than to receive. We're called to love our neighbors as ourself and in everything do to others as you would have them do unto you. So I subscribe to these and I would bring that to the town council again. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next candidate will be Robert Dunn. Robert, thank you again for being here. We'll have you step right up there to the podium. We'd be glad to hear your two minute opening. And after that, council member Victor Peterson will uh, start with the questions. Very good, thank you. Uh, um, first, let me begin by saying thank you for the opportunity to come down here and be uh, considered for this uh, position with the council. Um, I admit that I'm uh, relatively new to Gilbert. Uh, I've been living here, just purchased my home, been living here for three years now. I've uh, been in Arizona for uh, approximately 13 years. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block. Uh, on the plus side, um, I have no political uh, experience before. Um, consequently, I've got no ties to anyone other than to the citizens of Gilbert. Uh, I'm, I've wanted to do this for quite some time, uh, but the opportunity never afforded itself. I've either been busy as a single parent with two kids, or I've been working for some uh, other employer 
that prohibited involvement in outside activities such as this. Now that I've opened up my own office, my youngest has graduated from high school, finally the opportunity and the time is mine to do with as I see fit, and I'd like to take this opportunity. As a former intelligence officer and attorney, what I bring to the table is critical thinking and project management. Uh, these are things that I'm familiar with. These are things that I do well, and I can do, uh, I can look at things from a perspective that not everybody can see and ask the questions that need to be asked so that we know that we're going in the right direction. Thank you. Um, so the first question is that uh, the town has adopted a set of financial policies which are public record and available upon request to the town clerk. Uh, are there any changes or additions to these policies that you would make? If so, which ones and why? Uh, thank you, Council Member uh, Peterson. Um, I took a look over the, the, the fiscal policies uh, that the town of Gilbert has in place. And uh, frankly, I was quite impressed with the detail and um, with the, the, the scope and the direction that these policies have the, the, the town going. Um, the only thing that I could think of that was possibly needing consideration was when I looked in um, uh, paragraph two of the policy statement, there was a section in there where it limited the uh, mayor's ability to transfer funds within programs to a cap of $50,000. Now, not being familiar with the town's budget, I don't know how long it's been since this issue has been looked at, but it seemed to me that the $50,000 cap might be low for the mayor's discretion to move funds around rather than bringing it before the, the full council. Uh, I thought that perhaps maybe that was something that could be reviewed. If it was uh, still good, that's fine. But if it was reviewed, maybe it was, there could be just cause for raising it to perhaps $75,000. Uh, my experience, I can tell you, I am not one of those people that believes that something needs to be changed just because it can be changed. If it works and it's not broken, don't fix it. So that's, that's my view on that. Uh, but I think that uh, it, it seemed to me that it was kind of low, and I was just curious as to when it was last uh, considered and when it was established at the rate of uh, that amount of $50,000. Robert, thanks again for being here. This question is on our Parks and Rec. As you've observed the design phase of the regional park in South Gilbert, what are two areas that you feel are strengths in this design and two opportunities the town should be addressing going forward? After, after that question, if you could have any initial thoughts on the financial model for the park. Certainly, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Taylor. Um, first off, I, I like the, the Gilbert Regional Park. From what I saw, it looks like a, a great project. Um, the strengths, uh, I appreciated it, how comprehensive the project was. It, it seems to appeal to uh, every age group and just about every activity that uh, the citizens of Gilbert might want to be involved in, from the aquatic center to the uh, skate park, to the ball fields, to the amphitheater. Uh, very comprehensive, very well thought out, and I'm very, I'm very impressed with the, the, the program. Uh, mentioning it, I also, the other th aspect of it that I really appreciated was the amphitheater. Um, not every park has an amphitheater. Um, a lot of them are just much smaller and just have the basics, but I, I like the inclusion of the amphitheater. Having said that, that takes me into the weaknesses of the project. Uh, again, I like the amphitheater. I think it could actually be a, a revenue generator. But uh, I was concerned about the, um, the capacity being limited to 3,000. I didn't know if perhaps expanding the, the, the capacity of the amphitheater would allow for small level uh, concerts, 
uh, small local bands that are trying to, to get started can have shows there, and uh, you can have uh, some revenue generation from the amphitheater with uh, a, 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 perhaps a larger capacity. Um, with regard to the, the amphitheater, I also am concerned the uh, food truck, the layout of the park, the food truck uh, area is, uh, could be more centrally located. It's a little pushed down. If it serves well for the ball fields, um, but it's not very well located for the amphitheater. And my thought is that people going to the amphitheater for some type of a show would also want to avail themselves of the food trucks. And it's a bit of a, a, part, a bit of a run to get from the amphitheater to where the food trucks are set up. So that was a, and then finally, um, I'm sure it's been considered, but uh, I'm concerned about the, the possible traffic congestion overload on those roads um, once the, the park is completed. Um, there might be, need to be some expansion there. And with regard to financing, my thought would be that uh, their user-based system, particularly for the aqua, uh, aquatic center and the, um, the general purpose center would be uh, appropriate. And then I would also think that the uh, general funding would have already been worked out before the, the, the per first plot of land was purchased. Robert, our capital improvement plan is essential to the short and long-term planning of our community. How would you prioritize the projects included in the CIP plan? Uh, thank you, Mayor Daniels. Um, my, my view on the, the, the capital uh, improvement plan priorities is, is basically goes to my fundamental views of, of government. Um, first and foremost, I would think that funds need to be allocated towards uh, maintenance. The, the, the city is in great shape now from a citizen's perspective and it needs to be maintained. We need to, to keep everything running the way it's supposed to be and uh, provide those services, those critical services to the citizens of, uh, of Gilbert. Uh, after that, um, once you've got everything under control and, and maintained, then what you want to look at is potential improvements for the citizens, citizens of Gilbert uh, in the way of um, uh, services and quality of life. Uh, the uh, regional park is a perfect example of improving the, uh, the services and the, the, the uh, quality of life for the citizens. After that, I would think we would want to focus on efficiencies, uh, try to uh, do what we can to put funds into uh, projects that would make the town even more efficient so that going long term, we uh, are getting the most bang for our buck uh, everywhere we spend one. Um, and then finally, uh, I would look at uh, putting funds towards growth. Uh, we want the city to, to, to grow and to flourish, um, but uh, I believe those other three categories need to take a higher priority over growth uh, because if, the, if you don't have the basics covered and you don't have the citizenry, citizenry taken care of, uh, no amount of growth is going to compensate for that. Robert, thank you for coming down tonight and putting yourself forward for this process. Having observed the council over the last few months or years, what is one thing that you would do differently and what's one thing that you would do the same? Um, thank you, Council Member Ray. Again, uh, I've only been in Gilbert for, for three years. Uh, I am not, by any stretch of the imagination, um, a political junkie. Um, quite frankly, uh, I had to check to find out where the, the council chambers were. Um, this is my first time down here. And uh, so uh, I've not been closely uh, involved with the, the actions of the council. However, um, my view on the, the work that the council has done is based on the results that I've seen. I moved to Gilbert three years ago because I wanted to live in Gilbert. 
I wanted my son to go to high school here in Gilbert. I wanted to live in Gilbert uh, as opposed to any other uh, uh, city in the valley. Uh, that was my personal choice because I liked what I saw. And then it was only after I moved here that I learned of the other things that uh, were going on here, that Gilbert is one of the fastest growing communities in the country, that it is the number one safest town in the state of Arizona. Uh, these are things that, that are, are fabulous, and uh, they are attributable at least in part to the, to the work of this council. Um, with regard to things that I would like to, that, that I would disagree with with the council, I really, I can't honestly put my finger on anything. Um, I can tell you my, my daughter is, uh, works for the city of Gilbert, and uh, through her I've had the opportunity to uh, meet Chief Dorn. And uh, I can only say that perhaps with, with tongue in cheek that uh, I wouldn't have let Chief Dorn uh, put in his retirement papers because uh, he's an excellent, uh, excellent police chief and I, I really liked what I saw when I, I met with him. Hi, Robert. How are you? Fine. What do you think you would be able to accomplish or contribute to the town during your appointment to the town council? Well, thank you, uh, Council Member Peterson. Um, I, I, I recognize that this is a temporary position. This is it's scheduled to expire in, in January 2017. Um, I liken that to other work that I've done, uh, where currently I serve as a uh, judge pro tem with the Maricopa County Superior Court. Uh, when I go in and I fill in for another judge, I'm not there to rewrite the law. I'm not there to change his courtroom. I'm not there to make history. I'm there to hold down the fort while that judge or commissioner is out for whatever reason, vacation, illness, a family emergency. Um, I view this position as the same, same thing. I would be someone here, hold down the fort, uh, not make waves and change everything, but to keep the council going in the direction and keep the town of Gilbert going in the direction that it's been going in for years. Um, what I, in doing that, what I can bring to the table is uh, uh, my sense of logic, uh, my inquisitive nature, where I can realize the questions that need to be answered uh, in order to make sure the right decisions are made and uh, make sure that we continue on uh, conservative uh, practices that have been implemented by this council uh, that have led to Gilbert's uh, uh, success. Robert, thank you for your desire to serve. And I think from all of us, we wanna thank you for serving our country. My pleasure. The town council sets policy for the compensation and benefits for all town employees. What compensation approaches are you most familiar with and what is the best approach for Team Gilbert? Well, thank you, Council Member Cook. Um, as I indicated, I'm uh, a former military and uh, an attorney. Uh, finance is not my area of expertise and any, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, having said that, uh, my experience, I have seen a compensation package that I thought was very interesting uh, some years ago involving corporations compensating their CEOs with uh, payment of stocks as opposed to straight salaries. The benefit that this resulted in was the CEOs were tied to the success of the corporation. They had a vested interest in ensuring that the corporation was successful, and so they did everything to keep the stocks up. By keeping the stocks up, you kept the stockholders happy, and the company was more successful, and everything fed uh, one on the other. Now, clearly, this is not a, a, a practice that can apply directly to the town of Gilbert, 
However, uh, if that is an issue, one of the aspects that can be looked into is are there quantifiable best interests of Gilbert that can be used to assess that, that, that uh, compensation can be tied to so that you can say you've done, you've done this for the citizens of Gilbert and it's quantifiable and we can tie compensation to that. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, um, but if you're looking at a revision of the compensation packages or some type of a, a tweak or an addition to them, that is something that I have seen uh, and a little bit familiar with uh, that could be a possible uh, uh, option that might bear looking into. But again, uh, admittedly, finance is not my, uh, my expertise or my area of, uh, of practice. Robert, that concludes the question portion. We'll have your one minute closing and upon completion of that, if you can return to room 233. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, again, I want to thank the, the, the council for uh, selecting me to, to have an opportunity to speak before you and, uh, and be considered for this opportunity. Um, I'm looking forward to being of service to the town. As I indicated before, um, I've not had the opportunity before due to time constraints in other areas. Uh, I do now have the time, and uh, should I not be selected, I still want to be of service to the town of Gilbert in some other capacity, uh, whatever that might be. Um, and honestly, uh, I expect to, to learn more uh, if I'm selected from my experience here with the council than the council could, could possibly learn from me. Uh, and I uh, just look forward to that, that opportunity. Thank you. Our third and final interview for tonight will be James <coughs> Canlin. James, welcome to Council Chambers. We will, yeah, thanks for being here. We'll begin with the two minute opening and then Council Member Victor Peterson will start us off on the questions. Perfect. Well, I appreciate the opportunity sitting upstairs with the other two, two gentlemen. You've picked some great folks. And I won't put my name in there, but they are great individuals, and I appreciate the opportunity to, it's an honor to be here in front of you. Uh, just by way of introduction, my name is James Canlin. Um, I've been living in Gilbert for a little over 20 years. Uh, my family moved from Maryland when I was 13, moved to Mesa. And, uh, and when I got married and came back to Arizona, Gilbert was the only place to, to be because my wife is, I think, third generation here. So, so we came back and we've raised all five of our sons here in Gilbert, and uh, it's been a wonderful place. Uh, I've worked in both public and private sector. Uh, I've worked with both APS and Siemens Corporation, um, doing a lot of uh, government work, regulatory work, as well as Maricopa County, as you can see in my resume. I worked there as chief of staff at the Board of Supervisors uh, for a lot of years and uh, worked closely with, with the town of Gilbert through that time as an advocate and, and working closely with the council. Um, and then now I'm a, I own two small businesses here in Gilbert and so happy to be here. But I thank you again for the opportunity. It's a great honor for me to, to come and be a part of this process. The town has adopted a set of financial policies which are public record and available upon request to the town clerk. Are there any changes or additions to these po policies that you would like to make? If so, which ones and why? I read this and, I, and I'm grateful to have be able to receive this document from your clerk's office this morning. And I was proud when I saw the information on fiscal responsibility and conservative values that you put in with respects to your budget and your fiscal conservatism. And I was grateful to see that as a taxpayer. I'm sorry, uh, Mayor and, and Councilman Peterson. 
Um, you know, at, in doing a lot of these at Maricopa County, I've worked with a lot of departments in, in developing uh, uh, policies and budgets and, and looked at, at the different things that go into these things. So I'm well aware of what goes into this type of, of, of document, and I appreciate that. I, I would say that if I was going to add something to this document, I, I don't know that there's anything that I would take away from it, but I appreciated the information that was there. I noticed a lot of information in the information technology section. You really kind of kind of dove deep into that section and provided a lot of detail as to what uh, they'll do uh, with regards to policy in that department. I noticed that you touched on certain areas like um, um, responsibility in, in with vehicles and, and your facilities departments and other areas like that. If I was to add to this, uh, Mr. Peterson, I would say that, that uh, I would put more specific ways to cut costs and reduce the, uh, the, 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 the budget amounts to see if there's cost savings in there. But I'd also put in there things that, uh, that could directly impact certain departments. For example, I think it'd be positive to put in there, um, I noticed in your CIP plan that you had information with regards to natural gas in fleet vehicles. You can drill down and show actual cost savings to the town and how that can be applied back to debt service and, and things of that nature. Also, there's a great opportunity uh, for energy reduction, not only in natural gas, but there's, there's great opportunities to take a look at facilities departments. I would bet that in that budget there is a lot of, of um, a lot in the budget with respects to operating and maintaining your facilities departments. And there's some great ways to reduce energy consumption inside facilities with energy conservation measures. At the county, we, we took the opportunity of, of, of implementing $40 million worth of energy conservation measures, which ended up saving the county about a million dollars a year in, in, in reductions. And so it, when I was working on plans such as these, those, those, those level of detail were added in so that the Board of Supervisors was able to make um, decisions and policies based on, on opportunities such as those. James, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. My question here is on parks and rec. As you've observed the design phase of the regional park in South Gilbert, what are two areas you feel are strengths in this design and two opportunities the town should be addressing going forward? And if there's any extra time, I'm happy to hear your thoughts on the funding model for the park. I'll be quick on this one because I would like to get to funding because that's something I believe in strongly. But two areas of strength. Uh, when I worked at the, the county parks, you may or may not know this, but they have the largest park system of any county government in America in Maricopa County. I know how important parks are to the community and to its residents. And so it, it's an important part. It, it attracts business, it attracts people, it attracts quality homes. It, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an important part of our community. With that said, what I saw are the strengths, uh, Mr. Taylor, were the, um, that there was something to do for everybody there. As I, as I, as I looked at that, there's a dog park, there's, there's soccer, there's, there's baseball, there's aquatic center, there's uh, you name it, they've got a climbing, you know, an amphitheater, great things for, for folks to do. And so I, I thought that was, that was a very positive thing and will be, it will certainly be a gem in, in the Gilbert area. The second thing that I saw was, a, was an emphasis on public-private partnerships and I think that's a very positive thing. And it's a, it's a great way to, to attract business and also to, to create revenue revenue uh, generation for the, for the town. Some opportunities. I think the public-private partnership is, is, again, if I can use that as an opportunity, there, I think there are more opportunities for that, more retail space, opportunity for folks to dine and shop there. I think that's a great, great opportunity. One thing I noticed, and I'm not, I, I, I would consider this an opportunity, is, is I, I noticed two, two drives in and out, maybe looking at traffic control to see if that, if, if it's going to be get congested with the amount of people that I envision that might be there uh, would be important and, and see if there's maybe other ulterior routes that might be able to get out of there. Payment, I think is very important. Because as a fiscal conservative, I want to make sure that my taxes stay low. And uh, I would not be a proponent of raising taxes for this type of project. Um, and so I, might I suggest that the sale of excess property, and I note that it's on our um, ballots coming up um, to use as opportunities to pay down some of the debt. 
I might also um, provide opportunities for other leasing. Uh, cell towers are great opportunities, as we all know. They pop up on a lot of municipal land and provide great revenue to the towns or the cities or the, or the counties. And fees, uh, not a, high fees, not a, you know, but but we can all go over to Freestone, and we know it's going to cost something to get into Freestone and take part there. Fees can be a way to to uh, to help pay for this type of, of, of service to the city, the town. Excuse me. Our capital improvement plan is essential to the short and long-term planning of our community. How would you prioritize the projects included in the CIP? Well, that's an interesting document at 310 pages. And so it's hard to go through that all last night and today, but it's an, I think it's very well thought out and it shows a, a, a lot of thought by yourselves and by your staff. And I'm sure Patrick was, was integral in that. But working uh, through these types of, pro of projects before at Maricopa County, it's, I think it's very important that your departments um, are intimately involved in, in making sure that their thoughts and their voices are heard in that process. Um, because they're going to have things that they need to get done. And they're going to help you prioritize projects. But with that said, you, the specific ask, Mayor, is what would I do to prioritize these? And it would be as follows. I would take public safety first. I think that the most important thing to any town or municipality um, is public safety, and we can't neglect that. And making sure that our police and fire departments have the resources that they need uh, to, to, to manage and, and help the public feel safe in the, in the community, I think, is number one for me. Um, number two, I kind of lump these two together, so forgive me, but I would say water and wastewater. A healthy and vibrant community uh, depends on good services to that community and, and water and wastewater. I can't imagine turning on my tap and having uh, not healthy water coming out. So I think that's important to the health and safety of our community as well. Traffic control I listed as number three. Um, and I think that's important for safety and, and, and purposes as well. But I would lean on our, lean on the staff of the town to make sure that as they prioritize those different, the traffic control, the, the roads and streets that need to be taken care of, that they do it in a way that it isn't going to create traffic problems and safety problems for our community. And, and so um, picking streets, arterial streets that don't, uh, that aren't close to one another, just making sure there's a, there's a good plan um, for the dollars that's spent. And then finally, I think parks um, is, is a very important thing um, to this community. And, I, and I, I love the plan that you put forth and I think it's a, it's a beautiful uh, park and I think it's one that, w that we can take pride in uh, if the funding is there to, to be able to um, put the dollars into that, to that plan. James, thanks for being here tonight and putting yourself forward in this process. Having observed the council over the last few months or the last few years, what is one thing that you would do differently as a member of the council and what is one thing that you would want to keep the same if you were a member of the council? This is a tough question. I think the hardest one for me to answer, but <clears throat> Mayor, no offense, if I could, I, I think one thing that uh, um, would do differently is, is talk the former mayor into staying and filling out his term and not being in this position right me now. Me too. I, you know, I've been here a lot of a lot with Boy Scouts, with religious in front of you, in my religious callings, um, doing a lot of things with the town. Um, I'm not sure I have noted anything that I might change. But one one thing I will say is, whatever council it has been over the last two decades that I've been here, I've noted a very real um, collaboration and a desire to. Uh, that each of the, the, the mayor and each council member has um, in making Gilbert great. And I think that that's perfect. And I hope that if I have the opportunity to, 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 to sit with you, that that will stay the same. Because Gilbert is a great place to, to live, work, play. Uh, it's the greatest, greatest city in America, greatest town in America. And so that, that's what I would say. Hi, James. How Hi. are you? What do you think you would be able to accomplish or contribute to the town during your appointment to the town council? Well, and this is an interesting question because given it's a four and a half month appointment, I, I, I thought about this. What do you say? What, what, what plans do you put forth? And how do you, how do you accomplish or say we're going to 
do X, Y, and Z in four months, that might be difficult. But what I would add uh, to this is, is, is what I bring is experience, what I bring is knowledge, is expertise, is an understanding of government, how it works, um, understanding the process, understand working with departments, um, managing budgets, uh, working, you know, an understanding of, of other local communities, other policy makers, uh, the impact that they have. Um, I think, I, think I, I bring a business experience and knowledge that, that in combine that with government that uh, is very positive and can have a positive influence, especially when we look at, at, uh, at moving forward your, your conservative uh, fiscal principles, as you know here in your policy statement. James, thank you for your desire to serve. We appreciate it and even your service in the past. The town council sets policy for the compensation and benefits for all town employees. What compensation approaches are you most familiar with and what is the best approach for Team Gilbert? Can I have an hour on this question? Three this minutes. Is, okay, I know. This, is, this, is, this is one is very important because uh, I'm passionate about it. Growing up in a human resources family, I understand compensation benefits. My dad beat it into my head over, over a lot of years. At Maricopa County, I worked on deferred compensation. I chaired deferred compensation committee, as well as worked on the wellness programs at Maricopa County for a lot of years. It's an important thing because we know that, that uh, our revenues are going down while our expenses are going up, especially in healthcare, and we can blame the federal government, but that's a, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, but what I would say is a very specific wellness program that, that isn't just an education, but has, uh, has requirements to it, reporting mechanisms, so that the town can understand what it is that they're spending their dollars on and find ways to reduce those. Let me give you an example. Uh, as you all know, healthcare costs rise especially in, in, in large organizations because of the number of visits you might make to a doctor or to an ER facility. There are ways to reduce that, co that increase in cost, one being like Teladoc. I'm not here to promote anybody. Uh, Teladoc, where you can call, get a prescription over the phone, and you skip that step of going to the ER for a, for a basic common cold, uh, which, which drives up costs. Um, again, I, I spoke about wellness systems. The, the idea of compensations typically is very difficult because we, while we don't promote laying off, that's, that's a, a, a bad word, there are things you can do through attrition, uh, such as if a job were to, a, a, a person were to retire, you might be able to take that, ter that person's job responsibilities, break it into two or three, give those individuals an increase in compensation but still save dollars uh, because you're not paying those large costs in compensation as well as uh, benefits that would cost you for that particular employee. Uh, you, you know, and I, I, it, this, is a, this is a tough one and it, it, it's important to understand because of the, the rise in these costs and, and, and I believe very strongly that it can be managed but it has to be managed uh, working with departments and understanding their needs and making sure that as they're working with their employees that there's a reporting mechanism back to, to the council uh, to understand what it is that's driving costs up. James, thank you. That's all six questions. At this time, we'll do the one minute closing and different from the other candidates, we will actually have you stay here. The other two will come back down to this room as we move into 233 for executive session. So one minute closing. Thank you, I, I won't take long. I know you've been here for a long time. I'll just say again, thank you. It's a, it's a true honor uh, to be, have the opportunity to stand before you. Uh, it would be an honor to serve. Um, I consider myself not green. I can hit the ground running and, I, and, and uh, with my experience and background, I, that, uh, I can make that pledge to you. But it's, it's an honor. It would be a true honor to serve the town of Gilbert. I've loved the community and I want to keep it the, the greatest place in America to live, so thank you. Again, we'd like to publicly thank all candidates for bearing with us for all six of those questions. Is there a motion to recess the special meeting and reconvene an executive session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.
Thank you for being patient with us. We would like to reconvene the special meeting and we will move specifically to administrative item number two. I'll look to council for a motion. Did you want to say anything before? Did you want to say anything before? Yeah. Thank you. We'll do a motion in just a second. We just want to keep everybody on pins and needles for just another few minutes. Um, first, we just want to thank all 29 applicants that we had for this position. That's a pretty incredible number. Um, the quantity of people who are both qualified and willing to serve in this community is impressive, and we are grateful for all who are willing to throw their hat in the ring and uh, put themselves out there. We very much appreciate, especially the three of you, Eric Jones, James Canlin, and Robert Dunn, for your commitment to the town and for your willingness to serve at this level. Um, we can all attest to the fact that it's not always an easy job, but serving your community certainly is worth all time, energy, and effort that it takes. So thank you very much for that. With that, we will look to Vice Mayor Taylor for a motion. Mayor, thank you. I move to select James Candlin to fill the vacant town council seat with a term ending January of 2017. And I will second. We've had a motion and a second. Please vote. That motion is approved with the 6-0 vote. With that, um, January, uh, excuse me, August 18th will be our next regularly scheduled council meeting where we will be swearing in um, Mr. James Canlin to that position at the very beginning of that meeting. And we will get right to work right after that. So thank you again for all being here. At this time, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>